Tonight's ongoing war of words between Vice President Baumia and former President Mahama seeps into NDC flag bearership contest as one of Mahama's main contenders criticized the former president for running a campaign focused on purging himself of the incompetent tag instead of focusing on what the NDC can do differently. Any economics lecturer can give lectures on the economy, but not every lecturer can manage the economy. He wants to come and do more damage. <laughs> As if he didn't do enough damage. Well, we are waiting for him. We are waiting for him. But the people of Ghana are going to be remembering any candidate based on alleged incompetence and incompetency. That is going to be a problem for any campaign message. So that we hear from NDC flag bearer contender, Dr. Ecospio Gabra, who has tonight confirmed that there is a coalition of five flag bearer aspirants working together to get a level playing field in the race to lead the NDC. This is a Top Story with Evans Mensah. And Top Story is always brought to you by Bond. It's also brought to you by Gas and Cement, the nation builder, Vodafone, the future is exciting and nationwide. Now, it is a contest that seemed to be heating up, but now there is a third factor. It was just a, a playing field of NDC aspirants seeking to lead the party into the 2020 elections. Then came along Vice President Dr. Bahu Baumia, who, of course, through his own jobs, had the... Uh, the passing many consider the front runner in the NDC race. Summer President John Dramani Mahama, who has had his own say today, uh, uh, questioning and launching an assault on the vice president and his office today. Well, one of the contenders in that race to, to lead the NDC, Dr. Ecospio Gabra, uh, has today been criticizing the approach uh, being rolled out, played out quite openly by former President Mahama and his advisors. He says uh, former President Mahama is, is spending too much time focusing on trying to purge himself of the uh, incompetent tag, uh, responding to Dr. Baumia when the, he should be, and the candidates rather, should be selling how the NDC can be different from the NPP. We'll be delving into the controversy uh, a, 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 a bit more following what has been happening today. But I wanted to listen to uh, former President Mahama uh, speaking uh, in, on one of his rounds in the northern region campaigning, attacking uh, the current vice president, not mentioning him by name, but obviously referring to his previous lectures on the economy. They are going to give nursing trainee allowances. They are going to build warehouses in every district so that you can store your products. I started the Northern Region Tour this week and I've been going around a few days already. And I haven't seen a single factory in any district yet. And the question we ask ourselves, where are the factories? Where are the factories? Where are the dams? Where is the one million dollars per constituency? Now what this teaches you is that it is easier to make electoral promises than to fulfill them. Making promises is easy. Fulfilling them is the problem. That is what MPP has taught us. It is easier to give political lectures on the economy than to manage the economy. Any economics lecturer can give lectures on the economy, but not every lecturer can manage the economy. To paraphrase, you can do all the propaganda you like to win political power. When you come into government, the reality of the people's lives will expose you. 
And that there is an obvious reference to the series of lectures that Dr. Baumia, when he was a candidate in 2016 uh, and uh, and 2015 in the lead up. In fact, starting from 2014, delivering series of lectures, uh, some uh, at the Central University on the economy, talking extensively about the depreciating city then. Uh, that was an obvious reference to those lectures. And, and he then draws a parallel between what Baumia said then and how, uh, as the chair of the economic management team, is running. Uh, the economy currently. As you can imagine, Dr. Baumia has been firing back. I hear the incompetent one says he wants to come back. <laughs> he, he wants to come and do more damage. <laughs> he, as if he didn't do enough damage. Well, we are waiting for him. We are waiting for him. <laughs> we are waiting for him. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but you have to remember what happened at the time we came into office, after many years of incompetent economic management. You cannot describe it as any other than incompetent economic management. After many years of such economic management, the people of Ghana gave us the privilege to change course. But after just 20 months in office, the difference is clear. There is a big difference. After just 20 months of economic management, if you look at the macroeconomic indicators, and they don't like looking at it because it makes them look bad, it exposes their incompetence. So that is uh, Dr. Baumia speaking, responding obviously to the attacks that you heard earlier from uh, Mr. Mahama. Guess what? Today, uh, there's another statement coming from the campaign team of the former president, former president John Dramani Mahama, in which they attack the uh, the, the, the the vice president, questioning the the fact that uh, he seemed not to have accepted the role as a vice president and uh, has become a what a disgrace to the office because he's not holding himself out as such because of the comments that he just had there. In fact, listen to uh, James. Jenny Mbwati, who has been speaking to my colleague, uh, Rafiq Salam, uh, in the Upper West region today, responding to what you just heard there from Dr. Baumia, laying it into him, criticizing uh, what they believe to be the fact that he seemed not to understand the role of vice president and that they will not stand by and let him attack the former president. Listen, and uh, James Jenny Mbwati speaks for the John Mahama campaign. Our main issue with it is that he seems not to have transitioned from the candidate Baumia or the running mate that he was and the lies and the propaganda to the vice president that he is today, which requires that he conducts himself and his office with dignity, decency and grace. And that's precisely uh, our point of departure with the comment that he made. So what exactly are you talking about? The content of that statement is despicable. That statement ought not to be coming from from the vice president. We are talk, I mean, we are talking about a man who has made promise to restore allowances to nurses, trainee nurses. As you and I do know, on a daily basis, these nurses are agitating for the payment or be, as a result of the non-payment. This is a man who made promise to trainee teachers to restore their allowances. You do know that on a daily basis, the teachers are agitating for the restoration or the payment to be made. Here is a man who has promised one village, one dam. I am happy to be talking to you, Rafik, because you are a very proud son of Wa. Show me where, here in Wa, that you have one district, one factory going, where you have one village, one dam ongoing, where you have one district, one warehouse. This is a man who is very government, has broken literally every single promise that it has made. Two years into his four-year term, I don't think that it should take Dr. Mahmoud Baumia to be making the comments that we, are, we see him making propaganda. In any case, in any case, we are talking about a man who, whose credentials as a two-faced or is it um, as a hypocritical politician is, is clear to all. It is under Dr. Baumia. In fact, he led, spearheaded the campaign to go into senior secondary schools prior to the 2016 elections and do partisan campaign with students. As you talk to me now, you are aware that the headmaster of Tampene Senior High School 
has been suspended because we are told that an NDC organi national organizer hopeful went into one of the schools and interacted with the students. Have you heard Dr. Baumia's own comment on this? Shouldn't he be the one leading the charge, saying that this cannot be right because this was the very thing that he, he, he conduct, how he conducted himself? I mean, so what we are saying is that we are not going to make anybody take former President John Dramani Mahama for granted. We are not going to let anybody turn him into his or her punching bag. We won't throw the first blow, but if it is brought to our doorstep, we will hit back in equal measure. And we are sending that message clearly to Dr. Baumia and anyone else who intends to do that. Well, this whole controversy, the war of words, the feud between the vice president and uh, the former president, is, has seeped into the NDC's own internal contest to lead the party into the 2020 election. Today, Dr. Uh, Cospio Gabra, one of the main uh, contenders in this particular race, has been speaking about it, uh, criticizing the approach. He says uh, the former president should not be focusing too much on trying to purge himself over this incompetent charge and that, that the focus rather should be on trying to uh, sell the NDC and how how it will do things differently if ever they are elected. We'll, 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 we'll hear from Dr. Spiel Gabra shortly, and his, his confirmation also today that apparently there is a coalition of five uh, flag bearer aspirants who have been meeting uh, in in a joint effort to get a playing a level playing field. We'll be disclosing that shortly. Uh, stay with us. But let's go on to the phone lines. And my colleague Raymond Aqua is joining me in the studio as well as we begin to dissect what really is happening uh, between the former president and the vice president. What about the man whose name is going to be an image, is going to be on the ballot in 2020? Uh, Kufado himself. Then uh, the former president um, seem not to be going at him too hard. We'll be analyzing what's happening. Is it a campaign strategy and the implications of that? Pius Hajide is the deputy information Minister joins us on the telephone line right now. Mr. Hajide, thank you for your time here on Top Story. Thank you, Ivan, for having me. Now, the charges, simply, why is the vice president doing propaganda when he should be focusing on assisting the president, govern the country, and manage the economy? <laughs> thank you very much, Ivan. The vice president of the Republic, His Excellency Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, is very busy assisting His Excellency the President uh, to fix the uh, eight or so years of sustained uh, mismanagement uh, of this economy. Uh, we inherited a very terrible economy, and I can assure you that His Excellency does not have time to engage in uh, propaganda and uh, trivial partisan politics at this point. Uh, his focus has been uh, on assisting His Excellency the President, like I said, to fix uh, the economic quagmire and challenge. Uh, that we inherited as a country. And the people of Ghana do see that their vice president is at work. Uh, he was at the forefront of leading negotiations for the two billion Sinoshore hydro uh, framework, uh, that beautiful butter arrangement that will see uh, proper infrastructure transformation. As far as this country is concerned, everybody uh, would recall that His Excellency the Vice President was uh, in the lead, in fact, in charge of that uh, successful negotiation, and, and so on and so forth. So it's a very busy person managing the economy as chairman of the economic management team, and making sure that inflation is coming down. So so he's, he, he, if he's, he claims he's busy, and yet he gets time to throw jabs at the former president when there are urgent matters of state to attend to? Well, I think that uh, we rather have to advise the former president, John Mahama, and managers of his team to focus on the NDC and their internal elections. Uh, he doesn't seem to know uh, what time is it right now. Uh, uh, you you, you say that. I mean, they can choose uh, not I, to focus I, on that. But uh, but the vice president hasn't got that luxury, I, unfortunately. He hasn't. He's a vice president of a state with challenges. Everybody admits that. Um, he doesn't seem to be focusing. That's the allegation against him. Can you address that? Of the NDC. That same NDC, which not too long ago, he had cause to describe as a lame horse, okay, and that the party was unattractive. 
again, not too long ago, uh, the former president also is on record to have characterized the leadership of the NDC as people who stood accused of uh, corruption and diversion of party resources and material, and so on and so forth. I can go on. Now, here is the gentleman who wants to lead uh, the NDC as a very become the president of Ghana. He himself has spoken about major challenges that the NDC, the vehicle that he intends to ride on, faces. And that vehicle is that is the vehicle to which he will be uh, 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 be made president in his in his mind. Okay, but even on the campaign, speaking to the NDC, we have not had one statement from president former President John Mahama on the state of the NDC and what. But, 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 but Mr. Hajide, why, why does that concern you? I'm talking about the vice president who is the second most important person in this country. And you will rather talk, choose to talk about what the NDC, a private organization, chooses to do no, with I, themselves. No. Well, I thought that we were having a conversation. And yeah, but I'm asking you a direct question about the vice president. The accusation is that he's spending time talking about the former president when there's an important matter of state to things to the state to do. You say he's important. You say he's urgent and he's busy. And yet he goes on platforms and he's spending time talking about the former president. Well, my, my understanding is that from time to time, the former president ought to be reminded uh, of his record, the abysmal record that he left. Uh, you recall that by 2008, when the NPP was leaving power, and when His Excellency, the former president, was also coming in, also again at the helm of affairs as the number two man at the time, our GDP growth of, was around some one, 9.1%. When he was leaving in 2016, it was a mega 3.7. We, what we saw was a declining growth in agriculture and industry. In fact, industry was in the negative. What record he left out was massive unemployment. I mean, this was the, state, the same NDC, the same president, President John Mahama and Ku, who froze employment into the public sector in this country, creating a massive uh, backlog of unemployed graduates. In fact, his record was that in his time, a graduate, Ghanaian graduates, willing and capable of working, had to form an association of unemployed uh, graduates. The record that he left is that if you check our debt-to-GDP ratio, it was at a, a, a whooping yeah. 73.1%. Mr. Ajida, you say that the former president needs to be reminded of these things, right? He who counseled teacher trainee... Mr. Ajida, uh, 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 yes, uh, you say the former president should be reminded of these things you, you list. From time to time... Yes, and uh, my, my, my question to you is, should, should it be the vice president... Of the state doing that, shouldn't you be? Shouldn't it be left to propaganda, uh, uh, your your party communicators and in yourselves to do for the vice president no, can no, focus no, no, on no. the most important part uh, things of state. No, no, I, 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 I disagree. I and I don't. For me, this is not propaganda. If it were propaganda, we can argue that. Uh, well. Uh, we all should not do it. We shouldn't even be left for some people. We don't believe in propaganda. These are facts. These are statements of fact. They are re historical records. I mean, they are immortalized on the books of this country. So they are not propaganda. And they are facts that from time to time, everybody ought to be reminded of, especially the former president who is seeking to come back. And in seeking to come back, is attempting to create an impression that uh, the situation that we are in today uh, 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 was any worse than he left this country. Yeah. That one, we owe it a due to the people of Ghana, even to him, President, former President Omahama, to remind him that, no, hold on a second, you may be forgetting, but what we see today is a far, far better record compared to yours. And, and so we can, you're saying that the vice president, we can expect him uh, to go after the uh, former president, and this won't stop? Mr. Ajide, you're saying that we, the vice president will still go after the vice, former president, and this won't stop? I'm not, I don't see it as going after anybody. I mean... He'll, he'll, con he'll to, continue reminding him of his failures, as you put no, it. No, I, 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 I'm saying that the people of Ghana ought to be reminded from time to time about what our 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 history has been, especially when 
a gentleman in question himself, the former president John Ma- Germany Mahama himself, is on record to have accused us of having short memory. He says that mm-hmm. the people of Ghana uh, have a short memory, yeah. and it is looking like uh, he thinks that, uh, well, people will forget the records, and then he can come in uh, uh, all kinds of uh, condemnations of the of the current system and all kinds yeah. of... Mr. Uh, Ajide, I, 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 must, I must say that I'm grateful that you joined us on, on, on this all-important conversation. And, of, of course, uh, the, uh, the controversy surrounding the, the former president and Dr. Baumia isn't going away. And in the NDC itself, there are other uh, flag aspirants who are currently criticizing the approach. Listen to uh, Dr. Kospio Gabra. As they go out of a meeting with me, go and ask people in your own community which of the NDC candidates, if we brought, will your community vote for, not just you, the delegates. And let that be your guidance in deciding how you vote yourself. There are some who say the former president is clearly looking beyond the internal elections. It appears he's won. That is why he's engaged in the vice president in a public debate on national issues. Where do you stand on that matter? Do you think that... I'm not part of his campaign team. I have no idea what the strategy is. We'll leave that to see if that strategy works. But the banter with the vice president, what do you make of it? Oh, I mean... Many comment, commentators are wondering whether we are going to have a debate during the 2020 elections about who is more incompetent than the other. But that is what the debate seems to be about. That is not a debate I will expect to be part of. What do you expect the focus to be? The focus will be on the message that NDC will be bringing to the people of Ghana about what we shall do differently from what NPP are doing now. But the people of Ghana are going to be remembering any candidate based on alleged incompetence and incompetency. That is going to be a, a problem for any campaign message. Uh, do I get you suggest that a vote for Mr. Mama may mean that that may not work in the interest of the NDC? If whoever is advising him or he himself chooses to make incompetency an issue, then MPP will be taking us on along that trajectory. And I'm saying that I don't intend to use incompetency as a subject matter for debate with MPP. Mm-hmm. Because in my whole career of 40 years, I've never been considered or called incompetent. Uh, Raymond, where the political desk is with me. Raymond, you agree with that? Yes, and it sounds to many, including um, the claim that, one, you should go for the juggler in political campaigning, especially when you think you win. On the other side, it is an internal election that Mr. Mahama is going for. It's more like he's abandoned a particular race or he's very confident that he's won. The danger in that is that you may be thinking that you have the resources, you have some formal appointees working out things for you, but with an expanded delegate list, with a grouping that's way larger than it used to be in times past, you should be certain that some groupings on the ground may not go for you. So if you are one of those delegates today, which message are you hearing? An attack on the current vice president or what Mr. Mahama will do for you or is likely to represent in the NDC what has changed from what happened in 2016 and now going to the next election? Your focus currently, and Mr. Mahama's focus has been that, well, I am virtually fighting Dr. Mahama. Not even the president of the republic, who is the main person, who's going to be on the balance sheet anyway. So, Dr. Mahama is going to be running mate. In the same way that I ran off in 2016, and Bamiya got the upper hand because he was vice president who was tagging the president of the republic as incompetent. Yeah, he, he tried as they he did. They could, yes, and, and it reached a point, even Mr. President had to respond to that claim. Leaving out the, pres- the, the main contender, Nana Adudanko Akufuadu, making it look like he's a statesman in the election. And that's where the difficulty really is. So, focus. It looks like Mr. Mahama is on the vice president, not even the president. And the issues he's sending out are to the current government and not to the delegates of the NDC. What may be the shock in this case is that you might not have reached out like the people who are on the ground who are consistently telling them that, I'll do this differently. And listen... Spio Gabra is exploiting that situation. You see what he's saying? He's saying that nobody has attacked me as incompetent. So if you want to engage in an incompetent talk, the NDC may need somebody who cannot be attacked by being called incompetent. What you don't do is to fuel that conversation with the man who's consistently going to reference you in that particular capacity and lose out on your own grounds. Yeah. By the time you may look back, it might be too late. Let's bring in uh, analyst uh, Ben F. Singh uh, with the Daily Dispatch newspaper. Also joins us on the telephone line, Raina has Some inter- interesting thoughts on this as well. Mr. F. Singh, I'm grateful that you joined us. I think we've lost him on the line. We'll try and get him back. Uh, Raymond, there's also, um, if you listen to John Mahama, he has 
he's almost now campaigning as if he's already won yeah. the primaries. Uh, in, in fact, I wanted to listen to um, something that Spielgaber had said today. Uh, well, let's go on to the phone lines first. Let's speak to Mr. Efsin, uh, who is joining us on the telephone line. He is a, a, an analyst and with the, uh, the managing editor of the Daily Dispatch newspaper. Mr. Efsin, thank you for your time here on Top Story. Hello, Mr. Efsin. Hello. Great. Thank you for joining us here on Top Story. Good evening. Good evening, John. Yes. Nice. Well, we just heard uh, Spio Gabra say that the approach where the former president, Mahama, seemed to be uh, attacking and engaging, you know, uh, the vice president, current vice president, Baumia, uh, and, you know, paraphrasing, purging himself, trying to purge himself of this incompetent act. It's not a way to go. And his, his belief is the focus should be on selling the NDC and pitching it as, as, as a credible opposition to the MPP, by highlighting what they can do differently. Do you agree with that? Thank you, Ivas. I believe that Mr. Spilgavra, unless I read wrongly, he says that President Mahama Bef, uh, government, uh, then government performed far better than what the current Akufada administration is doing. That's one of the biggest endorsements that uh, delegates who decided would take from somebody who aspires to replace Mr. Mahama as the next flag bearer for the party. Two, if it was him, Mr. Spilgabra, and he's attacked by uh, the vice president, will you sit down and expect somebody to reply? So I think that basically what Mr. Spilgabra has said and what he's saying is for the delegates to decide whether they want Mr. Mahama or not. Because the delegates would think that Mr. Mahama is being weak, he's being punched, and he's sitting down, hands in between his thighs. But what if the vice president is simply throwing a bait to Mr. Mahama, knowing that he will follow the bait? In fact, to be honest, if I was an unconfirmed, maybe uh, I was an undecided delegate of the NDC, a statement that the vice president made, Vice President Bamiya made, that Mr. Mahama should come, they are waiting for him. I would think that Mr. Mahama is somebody they are afraid of all that contestants. Because if I was with um, uh, Vice President Baumia and Mr. Mama is a weak candidate, I keep waiting for him to come. I will not try and think that we will pummel him. I'll keep quiet, let him come and he'll be a soft punch. So once you say that he is the one that you are waiting for him, if I was an unconfirmed delegate, I'll say look this is somebody that the uh, MPP is afraid of. And secondly, um, if you listen to the Mahama's language and the campaigning, it appears to be he appears to be campaigning as if this is uh, a, a straight race in the in in a general election. Um, this is really a campaign about the delegates. Do you sense that, and can that be potentially uh, damaging? On the other hand, no. What stops Mr. Spilgabra, Sylvester Mensa? Uh, Professor Alabi, for example, or Guzi, responding to whatever is happening. I mean, clearly, uh, until further notice, the two parties that voters will alternate for power is M MPP and DC. So if you are contesting, you are going for unconfirmed delegates, delegates who have not decided their vote. And, well, the president has admitted that things are not easy. And you are not going to offer alternatives if you come. So what are you trying to do? Because the delegates will want the NDC to be back in power. So even if you are not addressing the challenges as at now, that is stop them from, con from also commenting on the current state of affairs in the country. And that's uh, Ben Efsen there. He is the editor with the Daily Dispatch newspaper. Now, quickly listen to uh, Spiel Gabra talking about uh, these series of meetings that five of the aspirants have been having in the, in the coalition united in demanding uh, a level playing field. Right, and we've met as two people, as three people, as four people, and now as five people. So it wasn't the first time some of us have met as aspirants. You're considering because the option of magic. We are concerned magic. at making sure there's a level playing field we are concerned about ensuring that the right change takes place within NDC. We are concerned about the rules of the game, that there will be a level playing field and that all candidates will have a fair chance through whatever processes and rules that are set up by the party. It is not a gang up against anybody type. So that's uh, Spogabra, they're confirming that they've been meeting as uh, some of the aspirants, five of them currently. Uh, quick comment on uh, uh, Mr. Efson's last point about Mohammed's campaign strategy and approach, which is 
let's let's talk about 2020. Let's talk about the national issues and not necessarily address the delegates. I still believe, of course, I mean, to all intents and purposes, it can backfire. It can be counterproductive. It can utterly lead to the situation where you spend all your ne- energies dealing with the vice president, not the president of the Republic of Ghana, the vice president of the Republic of Ghana. When the substantive matter remains, what are you telling the people who are going to vote about what is this is not a national election you're going into you're going to a party election the most important thing is how are you in the position to win the 2020 election for them what has changed from 2016 to 2020 what makes you the kind of candidate that you go into the next election with and if you don't win what happens next time so those are the issues that perhaps the concentration should be on thank you uh, raymond top story is always brought to you by born your success are passion gasm cement the nation builder vodafone the future is exciting ready nationwide medical health insurance nationwide medical Insurance Best Health Insurance Company of the Year at the 2018 Ghana Insurance Awards and its CEO awarded Woman of Excellence at the Ghana Insurance Awards. Newsnight starts right now.